Hi everyone, it's Mikey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today it's week four for Mission Inspiration Weekly Challenges. So today the challenge is linear. So we have uh, follow the rhythm of order and progression. Life unfolds like a structured melody. Embrace the straightforward path, finding beauty in simplicity. Align your steps with purpose, understanding that clarity arises in the linear journey. Navigate the course with intention and let each step harmonise with the next. So linear could be taken in different ways. Um, it could be literal linear as in lines. It could be um, a journey from one place to another. It could be the journey of life if you want to. It could be the cycle of the seasons, the the line from spring through to summer and then autumn and then into winter and so on. So there are lots of different interpretations that you could do for linear. Um, like I said, you could do stripes, you could do lines, you could do a linear progression, you could do footsteps, you could do a pathway, you could do a linear horizon. There are loads and loads of different interpretations for this. Um, I'm going to go a little bit literal by breaking my art journal page down into linear, or so strip-wise. So I've already stuck the challenge card down to the back of my um, page that I want to use. So I'm going to begin. Now I've pulled out from my collection some grid paper, linear paper. So you could use lines or grid, because these are ar uh, arranged in columns as well as in rows. So that's going to be the background. I'm going to cut this up or tear this up in a little while. And then I'm going to, again, cut up some, sh some sheets of book text. This is from an old dictionary. It was falling to pieces. Um, and I'm going to stick those down in a line as well. So, but we'll add grunge and dirt and distress and paint and stenciling and that kind of stuff over the top as well. So first things first then, I'm going to grab um, my trimmer and just trim that down. I'm going to cut off the top for a start. Okay, and then let's cut up some strips. Now these do, don't have to be the same size you can go bigger you can go smaller thinner wider thicker whatever you want to do so i'm just going to randomly cut strips up and i've chosen this paper mainly because it harmonizes it's got brown in so it kind of goes with um the craft color to start off with the the substrate that i'm using I'm not being very eloquent today. I've not had enough coffee yet. <sighs> My whippet mug. Um, yeah, so let's just see how many we've got there. Probably not nearly enough. Let's just do a couple of wide ones. You don't have to be exact by using a, a cutter, obviously. You can use a tearing ruler, just do it by ripping strips if you want. Ripping strips, that should be enough. That should be enough. All right, so I'll put the trimmer to one side and then they're just nice enough so we can break it up just leaving a little bit of a gap. So this is going to be a bit of a process. So I'm going to use wet glue. I'm just going to use my Elmer's school glue. And I'm just going to run a bead down each one. Let's turn it that way because it might be easier to do that way. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a border, top and bottom, left and right. Just like so. And then I will 
go across and I'll start adding them in front to back because that way I can gauge what I need to go into the middle. So this is going to be a bit of a process. So what I will do is just to spare your boredom, <laughs> is I will put it on fast forward, whiz through, and then I'll join you when I've stuck all these little strips down. So cue music. Okay, so that is the grid paper laid down. So now I'm going to add strips of the um, book text. So the dictionary page. So I'm just going to grab my trimmer. Now I've got to be very, very careful with the trimmer because the paper is extremely thin, but old and brittle and it's liable probably to rip just like so so what actually you know let's get rid of that and then bring in um, a small cutting mat Okay, with a little cutting mat, that'll do. And a scalpel. And we need a longer ruler than that, I think. Okie dokie. So let's take that off. Make a little room and then we can just cut up some random strips that will overlap and we're not going to need many. I should think that is going to see us through. There we go. And a little cutting mat. Life's throwing hats at me there. All right, so let's start gluing down strips of book text. It doesn't make any difference which side of the page you want to put it down on. Of course, if you wanted to go to the, or take the trouble, there's nothing stopping you from creating a, a woven background where you took under, in and out, up and over. Nothing at all from stopping you from doing that, if you've got the time to do it, and the inclination that is. Again, it is still linear to create your background. Oh, got a double one now. Of course, the two pages out of there. Have I got two on that one? No, just the one. <laughs> right, so once again, I shall two cloth and join with you once I've filled in my little linear strips. Okay, so that's 
all the strips now glued down quite nicely so I'm going to need to give that a second or two just to kind of dry and set before I add any kind of water over the top of that so I want to add a little bit of colour into the background and then some stenciling over the top of that so yeah I'll just give that five or six minutes or so give me a chance to finish my cup of coffee just check on the boys to see if they're both okay that don't need to go out for a wee wee or anything and then I'll be right back I've just realized I've been sat here with only two of my three lights switched on I've got two lights one up top there and one up top there and then a strip light that's right across the top of my desk that usually gives even lighting but for some reason I've forgotten to put the strip light on <laughs> so I do apologize if it was a bit dark um right okay so I've got some yellow ochre paint here um which is just the kind of right color that I want it's translucent which means it's not going to be it won't cover the 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 book text in the background and I've just added a little bit of water you just see my new water bottle yes I have given in and bought one so I'm going to come in and just add some of that yellow ochre in linear brush strokes so top to bottom so this will die back it won't be very strong previous water bottles the um, the mechanism on top kept sticking and breaking and I'd had two different bottles and they've both done the same thing so I thought it was time to buy a different one but actually I didn't buy it I was actually given it but there you go from my friends at Indigo Blue a little bit darker in certain areas but that'll do I think for that quick tiddy up there brushing the water and we'll give it a quick blast get it dried off the colours dried now or just about so I'm going to come in with my cross grid stencil because this is a fairly linear one it goes both ways just like the grid in the background so I've got my ganache ink so we'll add a little bit of that nice little pattern in the background Just the right size for this page it isn't a coincidence so this ink is supposed to be brown but depending on what day you actually use it you get different colors the other day I got green today I'm getting mostly blacks a bit weird by anybody's standard but there you go and then we'll have some coming up the middle here <laughs> okay so I'm going to switch colors and switch stencils I'll give this a quick clean and a tidy and then I'll be right back. 
Okay, so the next bit of stenciling that I want to introduce is from my Grungy Bits stencil. So it's going to be these kind of marks here down the side here and here that we've got. But I want to also inject a little bit more brighter colour. So this time I've got Cactus Green stays on. And my green sponge, I'm going to turn the page that way. And we're going to run some of these. Oh, look at that. That's a nice green colour. So we'll run some of those across the page this way. Just brightens up the page a little bit. It was starting to look a little bit drab. And then we'll do it across here. Staying away from the edge. Very nice. <clears throat> I like that. And then we'll use these ones here. Oh, we could use those as well. Just to add a little bit more detail. Like so. Crop the ink back. And we can layer it over the darker colours. That's not a problem. Actually, I think that might be enough. Just add a bit more up there. Yeah, I think I'm kind of happy with that just for the time being. And because I've used a solvent-based ink on the stencil, it can be cleaned off just by spraying it with a little bit of alcohol. So rubbing alcohol, surgical spirits, isopropyl alcohol, you name it, whatever it is, what it's called in your country, just a little bit of alcohol. Even very cheap vodka will take that off. <laughs> but don't, please, don't waste it. Um, and use it responsibly. Um, right, okay, so that's that. So the next thing that I want to do is now get my focal point, which is going to be a stem. So I'm going to put that to one side. And I've got my Indigo Blue Skull stamp. This is one I did for Indigo Blue a while ago. It's a half-tone skull. Um, I know it doesn't have my name on it, but a lot of the stamps that I design for Indigo Blue don't have my name on it because it's not a signature stamp. But what we're going to do is we're going to use that brown again. Actually, we've got a different colour. This is Spiced Chai Tea. Is it Spiced Tea? Now, I'm hoping there's enough ink left in this for it to give us a decent rendition. But I'm using my stamp block so that I can come back and give it a couple of goes over. If I don't get a perfect impression first time. And I'm stamping this onto craft card, which is the same card that I use for the pages. So this may be a, a bouncy up and down one that I've got to do for quite a while. So again, the reason I'm using the skull, because if you think about a linear journey from cradle to grave, obviously this is the end of the journey. Not that we like to think about the end of the journey. Nobody likes to think about the end of the journey. But um, as the very old saying goes, memento mori, which is often mistranslated to be, remember, you will die or must die. It's just a reminder that we are all mortal. There's nothing macabre about it. So this kind of imagery in paintings has been used as a kind of remembrance device. You often see paintings where there is a skull in it, which is a memento mori kind of effect. Big in the Victorian era. 
And I think I might need just to bring in another colour on top of that because that spiced tea doesn't seem to be juicy enough. So let's bring in this ganache and go over the top. And that's the beauty, see, with layering inks. You can layer different colours over the top. To go darker if need be. I'm just wondering whether or not I do have a black. <laughs> I know I haven't got a stays on in black because it dried up but I think we're getting there actually. Have I got a Versify? I think I have got a Versify. That one's in black. I've got one in sepia as well actually, vintage sepia. Oh, that's quite juicy. Ah, well, there you go. Perhaps I should have just used this to start off with. I'm just wondering whether or not I ought to go over the top with clear embossing powder. <laughs> oh, decisions, decisions. No, no, we won't. We won't do it shiny. There we go. That'll do nicely. Thank you very much. Lovely stuff. Right, I'll clean up that stamp later on. Just turn that round. I'm going to put that down. So I need to get this dried off and then I'm going to cut it out. But I'm going to leave a little bit of a tiny border just all the way around. Okay, so let me get this dried off and then I'll get cut out. All right, so I've just released it from, so I will just quickly whip around with a pair of scissors. Okay, we have our skull. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut that into strips. So we will do random strips for the skull as well. Go right, so yes, lovely. Just what the doctor ordered. So bring the page back in, and then we can start to glue these back together in the right order. So Let's just make sure we get them all back 
where they should be. Starting with this one. See, it's at this point I wish I did have a fine point applicator. <laughs> I should have actually started with the middle piece, shouldn't I? That one. For spacing. And I have printed or stamped on the back of a Peter Lowell packaging, so I'm recycling. Extending the paper's journey. Right, so let's put that down the middle, or middle-ish. That's it. This was an old piece of um, stencil packaging that I'd messed up. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap, but I'm also going to just offset it slightly. Because we've used solvent ink, if we get any glue on the top surface, it won't matter. If we'd use distress ink and then got glue on it, you, you may have smudged the image. But this way, you don't. So if you're a bit like me, cack handed as the phrase goes. It's the medium of choice. And the last piece that we've already got okay, what about there? Whoop. Okay, so we need to leave that just for a minute or two, just for the glue to grab. And then we'll be back. The glue's had a few minutes to, to dry now, but I wanted to add a little bit more detail in that background, so, I've dusted off a really, really old Tim Holtz stamp set. This is Correspondence, so CMS 225. And what I'm interested in is these kind of like just random numbers that he sometimes throws into, like this one here, um, or this number five one here. Um, because also, obviously, journeys, stamps, Stamps go on a journey. Stamps do. Post goes on a journey. <laughs> God blimey. Um, and I've got these little mini stamp blocks, which are part of the skinny minis. And I was just thinking to myself the other day, actually, I could probably do with 
an intermediate set as well. So they keep your eye open, they may be coming soon. Um, another set of skinny minis, but different sizes. Um, so we'll start off with that number one there, which fits just nicely on these little mini stamp blocks. And we'll just use that Versafine again, mainly because it's still there. And we can start to add maybe just a little bit of detail into that background, like so. So these will these need sticking back down or but that's what happens, you end up getting ink all over your fingers. So what else have we got? Um bu -bu -bum, that one there, I think we'll have as well. Just random little numbers that appear. Just like so. And then, yeah, we've got bits that fall off. What else can we use? So there's the US mail at the top there. Um, oh, there's one there, look, 247, that one. So we'll have that. So we'll put that one maybe just next to it. So that's the thing with one of these little stamp sets. You can, there's so many little stamps that you can use just to add a little bit of difference and detail into the background. What else have we got? I like that one there as well. That's just got like registration marks on it, but we'll need a bigger stamp block for that one. So those lines probably are like for franking on a franking machine. That's cool. Lovely little linear marks. I like that because it can start to create a kind of border around the page. Like that. Okay. Are we happy with that so far? I think I am. Obviously, there's no quote or phrase. I'm just going to fall off there, I think. These are old stamps, they're very tired and are not sticking very well. Yeah, I don't really think anything else that needs to go on from that stamp set, but looking at my random words and numbers, um, which I used the other day, <laughs> we've got that one that says the end, <laughs> which, you know, is perfect so let's cut that one out i 
Am I being morbid today? I don't know. Am I? <laughs> I don't think I am. Let's just use, um, I've got one that's just got lots of different ink blending things on here. What's that one there? Just wants a bit of brown on it, doesn't it? Let's do some brush corduroy. That should do us. Grab that glue. And I think it needs to go down there. And I think I'm going to draw a line under that. So I need a pen just to add my little moniker on it. My nice new pens have started disappearing already. I think I'll put, oh well, I'll do it over here in the corner. So, I'll put the date underneath it. So today's date is what, is it the 27th today? Is it? Oh. It is the 27th today. Where's the month gone already, eh? That will do, there we go. So that is my art journal page for week four of the Mission Inspiration for Linear. There you go. So our linear journey through life results in the end. So yeah, I don't think it's very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't think it is that kind of macabre or morbid. Um, it's just one of those things, isn't it? It's there. You have to acknowledge it sooner or later. So anyway, um, I hope you have enjoyed watching me create this art journal page today. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. And don't forget, if you want to join us over in our Mission Inspiration Weekly Art Challenge Facebook group, then that's the URL on the screen there, but there will be a clickable link below this video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.